I know the history of what treasure hunters do. Dynamite, no care for reefs, no care for the wildlife, just looking for gold. And we've seen a lot of destruction of reefs, which is a very big focus of mine, is reef conservation and wildlife protection. Seafarer is not about that. And the fact that we're able to conduct treasure hunting in a very eco-safe way, it's just, it's revolutionary. My whole mindset is saving the ocean and with the use of the sea searcher. And we can go on sensitive sites like Juno where there are reef and find our targets and not have to worry about encroaching on the space of those species in that environment. My name is Ashley Hercash and I'm a scuba diver with Seafarer. I grew up in Melbourne Beach. I grew up on the beach basically and I was always in the ocean and it was kind of hard to get me out of it. I just, it's where I always wanted to be and so diving just made the most sense. So I got my first scuba certification when I first started in college and got more and more of my certifications as I got older and now I'm, now I'm here. <laughs> So growing up on the Treasure Coast, Space Coast, whatever you want to call it, um, it was always a knowledge that was there. Um, we're always aware that there's ships off the coast. My, my degree is in um, marine ecology. I'm more science-minded instead of history-minded, but I, I find history very fascinating and honestly being here just meant being in the ocean. My whole mindset is saving the ocean and when I first heard that Seafarer does their work in a conservative way, that's what drew me in and I was very interested in that. But in the ways that Seafarer I think does things differently, knowing from a history of treasure hunting, um, a lot of the traditional, I don't like to call it traditional practices of treasure hunting, but they've been very destructive. Dynamite, no care for reefs, no care for the wildlife, just looking for gold. And it's been very destructive and we've seen a lot of destruction of reefs, which is a very big focus of mine is reef conservation and wildlife protection. Um, Seafarer is not about that. We do everything that we can to be safe. And a lot of our sites, there is not a lot of life. There are their own ecosystems, a lot of benthic eco ecosystems that are just crab and starfish and the smaller life they usually don't think about. We're very careful. Everyone on the team loves the ocean and that's something that really stands out to me that I think is different from past dive explorations that look for treasure is there's no care for what ounce is in the water. Seafarer does care about that. When we're down there, everyone that I'm working with, if we see a wildlife that is in our way, we wait for it to pass or we give it its space. And our techniques for excavation are gentle. They're not, we're not throwing dynamite. We're not dredging an entire space and destroying the ecosystem. We are finding specifically what we're looking for and excavating in a very soft manner. And that's something that I, I love. And, Kyle is incredible where um, I come from that space of conservation and I have voiced, hey, there's certain things about this work that are kind of unavoidable, but when I've proposed, hey, these are some eco alternatives, could I write a way for us to do this? And it's been yes every single time. And this company is just so open to being eco-friendly and to protect these spaces that we work in. And I just, I, I love that about this company. It's, it's really awesome. The major difference with Seafair, beyond, like I stated already, the team that we have is so different from anything you could get anywhere else. Um, our technology is very unique. And the way in, in which we deploy our technology, it always originates from a place of safety and a safety of the workers and from the environment. What's so wonderful about the Sea Searcher is it has a lot of pinpoint technology. What you would just do back in the day is guess. You look at old history texts, you look at the archives, and you go, okay, the boat 
wrecked offshore over here, we can guess based off of historical data on storms that the boat may have moved this way and for when we understand how wrecks operate, where we might find stuff. And then you just go, you deploy divers, you blow things up, take apart reefs to try and look underneath them and see what you can find. And it is random. It is like rolling dice and guessing. With the sea searcher, we take the historical data, we map it, deploy the sea searcher, it scans, and it can locate pinpoint areas that communicate with us, this is where to look. And we can deploy our divers and be within a margin of error of 50 feet, max. And sometimes as a diver, we get deployed, we go down on the pin, and if we drop the pin well enough, it's within a foot. We can find things within a foot, two feet, three feet of the pin. And that's massive in terms of finding anything. To have a technology that can say, look here, circle search within 50 feet, we know that there's six targets that are this loud. And to find things almost every dive, albeit sometimes what we find is modern, we're still finding stuff every time. And that's, that's just pretty incredible. And to like that kind of technology can be used for so much, but for what we're doing specifically, it's, it's phenomenal. Well, from the data that we've been collecting, at least since the time that I've been with the company, there have been strong implications that there's a lot to find. And we like to say at Seafair that an object is not just an object, it's a story. And with everything that we can find on our site and what we have found so far, there's a very big story to tell here. And we already understand from written history and documentation, we know what happened, but we don't know the details. And that's what archaeology tells us. And that's what these objects tell us is what happened and the story behind the wreck. And with the use of this technology, we can pinpoint that story and do it in a way that is ecologically sensitive. Um, with the use of the sea searcher and the other technology that we implement while diving and while not diving, um, we can go on sensitive sites like Juno where there are reef and very valuable and sensitive ecosystems and we can find our targets and not have to worry about encroaching on the space of those species in that environment. The sea searcher can tell us, this is the area. We can go down on that area, see what's there, and safely extract what we need without harming the space in any of the systems or the organisms that are inhabiting that area. Um, to me, that's the most valuable component about the sea searcher and the data that it gives us and keeps me feeling like I'm still keeping to my moral compass with what we do because I know the history of what treasure hunters do and it's not good and there's a lot of damage that has been done and the fact that we're able to conduct treasure hunting in a very eco-safe way, it's just, it's revolutionary. And the type of technology that we're using that can make this kind of work safe can be, can be implemented in so many different ways in terms of we can find things on land with that kind of technology or underwater and not worry that we're gonna destroy the environment. And for me, that's the most important piece of as humans, us interacting with our world, with the natural world is not to disrupt when we're interacting. And that's what I see for the technology that we're using and for the work that we're doing, is we're being safe and we're caring for the environment while still trying to complete the story.